In this video, we are going to look at inverse proportion. You may have already looked at direct proportion, which is how we describe the relationship between two quantities which grow by the same scale factor. Two quantities which are inversely proportional, however, have a different relationship. Consider two cars. One car is traveling at a steady speed of 50 kilometers per hour. It travels 200 kilometers in four hours. A car traveling at a steady speed of 100 kilometers per hour travels the same 200 kilometers in just two hours. As the speed of the car increases, the time decreases. More specifically, as the speed is multiplied by two, the time is divided by two. Two quantities are said to be in inverse proportion if one quantity increases at the same rate that the other quantity decreases by. The product of the speed and the time gives the same number. In this case, the distance 50 times 4 equals 200. 100 times 2 equals 200. When two quantities are inversely proportional, their product is constant. Consider this scenario. If it takes five cleaners three hours to clean a building, how long do you think it will take three cleaners? Pause the video and have a go. Five cleaners taking three hours means each needed three hours, so that 15 hours of cleaning had to be done. Therefore, if three members of staff are cleaning, they have 15 hours of cleaning to do this. Therefore, it means it will take them five hours. In general, if y is inversely proportional to x, you will see it written like this. It may also be written like this, as an equation with the value k. k is the constant of proportionality, which for inverse proportion is the product of two quantities. You may be asked to give a formula for the relationship between two quantities, or to find a value. Consider this question. If you want to have a go yourself, pause the video now. To find the formula for y in terms of x, when you first need to find k, the constant of proportionality. Because for inverse proportion, k is the product of the quantities x and y, we multiply these. k has a value of 210, so xy equals 210. To put this equation in terms of y, we rearrange, dividing through x, to give us an answer of y equals 210 over x. To find the value of y when x equals 15, we can substitute the value for x into the equation, meaning y is equal to 210 divided by 15. This means the value for y is 14. You may also encounter inverse proportion questions involving indices. For example, y is inversely proportional to the square of x. y equals 20 when x equals 3. Form an equation in terms of y and find the value of y when x equals 2. If you would like to have a go at this, pause the video now. Because in this question, the proportional quantities are y and x squared. The constant, k, links these values, not y and x. We therefore need to know the x squared values. You can use a table like this to help lay out the values. k is again the product of x squared and y. So x squared equals y equals 180. So y equals 180 over x squared in terms of y. Try and see if you can now find the value of y when x is 2. Pause and have a go. When x is 2, x squared is 4. If we substitute this into our equation, we get 180 divided by 4. Therefore, y equals 45. We can also find values of x given y. For the same equation, find the value of x when y equals 7.2. If y equals 7.2,
We need to use our equation to find x squared. We can rearrange our equation to make x squared the subject, giving us 180 divided by 7.2 equals 25 for our x squared value. We can then square root 25 to find the value of x when y equals 7.2, x equals 5. There you have a quick guide to using inverse proportion. Remember, the constant of proportionality, k, is the product of the two named quantities. So be sure to check for indices. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Comment below if you have any questions. Why not check out our Fusco app as well? Until next time.